Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning from Munich, from ever, wherever you join. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful week so far. And we are delighted uh, to have 200 registration for our uh, event today. And uh, we also have a very great panel um, that we will launch uh, um, later today. And also a special announcement that we're very excited about to hear. And um, we want to learn here today a lot about IOD, IOV missions. And um, before we start, we will actually share a small video to let people join, uh, to give it a few more minutes and um, relax, lean back and enjoy the video. Today, two space stations are orbiting the Earth. Within the next five years, there'll be about three additional private space stations. And by the end of this decade, there'll be about five to seven space stations orbiting the Earth. There are about 150 missions planned to the Moon, and two lunar stations will be operational by the end of the decade. So space exploration market is about to be multiplied by six, from 25 billions today to about 150 billions in 2040. Why the space exploration race? Because we are at a technological turning point, when we know how to design, how to manufacture and how to operate spaceships, which not only are usable, but can be refueled in orbit with propellant coming from space resources. This enables us, humanity, to travel in space differently. This makes space exploration accessible. New markets for the Earth are being unleashed. For example, microgravity, which is an accelerator for pharmaceutical research and agriculture research. Space is also becoming the next entertainment destination. And on the governmental side, nations race to master access to strategic lunar resources like water and helium-3. Last but not least, as humans, our DNA is to explore and to unleash the potential of technologies we discover. In this new era, space transportation is the core enabler of a spacefaring nation. But space transportation is also its bottleneck. Indeed, today, there are only a few vehicles in the world that can carry cargo and or humans to a space station. And this is the reason why, at the exploration company, we developed NYX, which is a modular vehicle, reusable, that can be refueled in orbit, starting with cargo and with the potential to carry humans. This means that in low Earth orbit, so around the Earth, NYX can be a robotic space station for about 10% of the price of a space station. NYX can also serve space station, bringing cargo to them and then humans for about 50% of the price of the current competition. NYX can stay in orbit and remove threats when needed. And around the moon, well, NYX can carry rovers, drillers, habitats to lunar surface. NYX can act as a fast last mile delivery solution, complementing the very big Starship from SpaceX. NYX can serve the lunar gateway, bringing cargo and then humans. And will it be from the moon or from the low Earth orbit? NYX comes back and is reused. So thanks to this modularity, at the exploration company, we offer more services for a lower price than our competition. Moreover, we are the first in the world to use green propellant and to share our operating system, which is open source. Our ambition is to become a global leader with European roots. Join us in our mission to democratize space exploration. All right. Welcome, everyone to our today's session. Um, now we have more people joined us during the call. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the name of the exploration company, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our second event of this year, breaking down the barriers in, uh, um, of in-orbit demonstration. And we want to demonstrate to you today that uh, we make it easy to test your technology in space. And with me, I have a great um, panel uh, that's joining me with Bill McLamp, Christoph Figus, and Pratipa Su. Um, but before we start, I would like to give you a quick uh, intro to the etiquette and the agenda. 
first of all, would like to inform you that uh, we will record this meeting. So later on, you will have access to it on our YouTube channel. Um, please turn on the camera if possible. It's always nice to see the faces um, behind the cameras. And please keep yourself muted. Um, use also the reactions functions if you would like to speak up. And of course, you're invited to put your questions into the Q&A functionality of Zoom. Um, and also please direct the question always directly to a person that you would like to ask. In the first five minutes, we are a bit ahead of time. Um, we have the welcome and intro, which we are now past. We will have Nashwa and Naimi, our colleague, giving you more details on the technical capabilities of Mission Odyssey. Then we will have a 20 minutes uh, panel discussion on the topic of in orbit demonstration. And then we will um, explain you actually how you can fly on Mission Odyssey and how we'll work with, together with Pablo. And then in the very last 10 minutes, we will open the room, the stage to you so that you can actually ask your questions and we will provide your answers. But before we begin, I would like to introduce you to Geraldine Naja, um, the Director of Commercialization, Industry and Procurement from the European Space Agency, and also Elena B, our CEO and co-founder of the exploration company, who would like to perform a special announcement. And therefore I would like to welcome Geraldine. Maybe you can unmute yourself and um, Ellen, and I would try to highlight you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. And dear participants, hello from ESTEC, where I am now. Um, we just saw in the beautiful uh, video that you showed that indeed the exploration company uh, will democratize space exploration for space and non-space industry. But actually, the exploration company is already working on a test mission called Mission Possible that will already offer a microgravity platform for pioneer customers to be launched at the end of 24. On the ESA side, uh, as we have outlined in our Agenda 25, we have decided to boost the commercialization of space and to support the development of a new space uh, European ecosystem. We have many initiatives for incubation, acceleration, access to funding, but also we aim to provide IOD, IOV opportunities in orbit demonstration and validation, and also to support new ways of working with industry a la new space, such as through anchor tenant or service contracts. So it is my pleasure to announce today, together with Hélène, of course, that ESA has decided to procure the mission possible flight for 20 kilogram of payload. This opportunity will be offered to the two winners of the uh, competition organized by AZO, ESO, which also is the manager of the BIC in Bavaria, known well to the exploration company, I believe. And uh, this competition will be open to ESA SMEs, startups, research organizations. The two winners of this competition will receive a flight for their payload of 10 kilogram each. And why do we do that? Simply because with that, we support, first of all, talent in Europe, both the exploration companies, but also all you people attending the event, all the startups, you are European talents that ESA must invest in and retain in Europe. Second reason, access to capital. We believe that giving the winners of this competition the chance to fly their payload on mission possible, this will accelerate the deployment of their technology, of their concept, and demonstrate its performance. But this will also be an important step I think, for the exploration company. So with this, we boost the overall competitiveness of both the exploration company and the European startups winning the award. And finally, fast innovation. We need to speed up innovation cycles in Europe. This is key for the success of Europe in new space. And one of the ways to achieve this is faster, more frequent in-orbit demonstration services. So with that, I believe that this small competition will pave the way. And by the way, this is also a teaser for a larger upcoming opportunity. We will have a large IOD, IOV call under our new scale-up program, which was decided and subscribed by European space ministers last November. But this is for the next step. For the time being, we are very happy to have this small competition and to be procuring mission possible 
as a superb prize for two European SMEs or startups. So stay tuned and thank you to Hélène and the exploration company for making this possible. Thank you. Yeah, Geraldine, uh, thank you very much in the name of uh, all the expression company team. Uh, thank you very much for ISA's trust. Um, I wanted to perhaps to pass three main messages here. Uh, the first is, a, and I said that already, a very big thank you to ISA. ISA has been on our side, I think, since the very, big of the very beginning of the company. Uh, and we have the pleasure to uh, fly on Mission Possible. These are competition that we announced today. Uh, so very big announcement for us and also another ISA payload, as well as DLR payload and CNES payload. So I'm super happy to see that uh, we are heavily supported by the agencies from our mother country, starting with Europe. We are a European company and uh, Germany and France. Uh, the, the second message I want to pass, and this is more like for uh, you uh, in the public uh, willing country to try something with us, I think Geraldine said it's critical for the European space industry to be able to innovate faster. And uh, having discussed with people you know, at SpaceX, for example, SpaceX is doing Dragon as a demonstration platform for new technologies. And uh, ISA has set up a wonderful program for IOV, IOD. Um, we're going to fly to station, but we also can free fly. Mission Possible is our first uh, demonstration for that. In 26, we're going to fly Mission Odyssey, that's going to be a free flying vehicle. And that can be for each of you, where you come from. And we have here in the speakers, people coming not only from Europe, but also from India. So where you come from, uh -huh. a platform to basically test, demonstrate your technology. And uh, you'll see also with Christoph Figus that what you can test is just not microgravity experiment, just not a thruster, just not perhaps a small payload, but you can think big because we have a lot of volume in our vehicle, meaning we can really demonstrate not only a technology, but a whole subsystem, or even we can demonstrate new operations in orbit. So the way to think about in orbit demonstration can be, hey, I want to qualify super fast my technology, and this is to increase the, the pace of innovation here in Europe, but also, hey, I want to demonstrate a new kind of in orbit service, and I'm going to use the vehicle as a platform to demonstrate this new kind of in orbit services. So that was my, um, my second message. And I think the third one, and I think Pablo is going to provide here more details. We are a startup. So meaning one of core DNA, and this is part of our mission is to make, to democratize space exploration, to make it affordable, sustainable, open. And affordable means the price point has to be like accessible for everyone. Uh, so I'm happy to say that I think, at least from my knowledge, we have the lowest price point on the market. So making really this access to demonstrating technology in orbit demonstration accessible to everyone. And if in the process that you're going to experience with us, I'm, having, I'm asking here to the agencies present here, but also like to you control customers for Mission Odyssey in 26, you see things we still need to improve to industrialize. Don't hesitate, give us feedback because the efficiency and the affordability are score of our DNA. So I wish you a great event. Again, thank you so much to ISA for their trust and also special thanks uh, to ISA Vic um, who trusted us. I think the company was a few days old uh, when we were selected by Isavik Bavaria uh, to part, I mean, to be one of the companies supported by ISA. So without their trust, you know, we wouldn't be there today. So again, uh, thank you very much. And thank you very Geraldine for your trust. Very much appreciated. Hand over to you, Victor. Thank you very much, Hélène. Thank you very much, Geraldine. We're really, really excited to share this news today. Uh, to everyone and uh, we're looking forward to all the applications so maybe one two sentences from you Daniela I don't know you wanted to highlight something as well from AZO from the organization if not yes then... yes ah, yeah. yes uh, only, okay. only I also to express my thanks and uh, our excitement uh, thank you for Geraldine and her whole team and of course uh, Helen Victor and the whole exploration company team we're very excited we're only starting so uh, we will be uh, all over the place in the next weeks and uh, we really hope to to make some uh, difference here with this uh, as zero this is a small competition but let's start small we can become bigger and successful together thank you thank you much Nadia. very well said and i also shared with you the link in the chat so you have access to it and then i would like to introduce you 
to our next speaker, Nashwa Naimi, who is our lead vehicle design and product strategy at the exploration company. And I hand over to you, Nashwa. Yes, thanks a lot, Victor. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Najwa, and uh, I am the mechanical and thermal architect of Nix. Uh, so I'm uh, leading uh, a team of talented uh, designers, mechanical, thermal, and aerothermal engineers who are working hard every day uh, to shape Nix and make it real. Um, and I'm also in charge of product strategy. So basically, I'm the technical focal point for our customers uh, to make sure that the product we're developing uh, are fully in line with the needs of the market. Uh, so today, I would like to introduce you uh, to um, our Nix Earth um, vehicle uh, in its uh, uh, first configuration. So the configuration for the maiden flight uh, that we named uh, Mission Odyssey uh, that is planned uh, in 2026. Um, and here, uh, as you can see in the background, uh, we have uh, the vehicle um, views. Uh, so for this mission, uh, Nix will be uh, free flying around uh, the Earth in low Earth orbit uh, and will serve as a mini space station to be able to host a wide range of microgravity experiments, in orbit demonstration, and a lot of uh, uh, lab and food processing pharmaceutical experiments, and also uh, can be a platform for uh, 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 the expression of art and entertainment uh, goals. Uh, so here, a, a little bit on, uh, let's say, the, the technical side. Uh, so uh, as you can see uh, on, on the, the view here, uh, Nix is uh, made of two parts. Uh, so you have the part on the right that is uh, the capsule. So this would uh, be the part that will uh, be uh, uh, returning to Earth. Um, and uh, in, inside of this capsule will have uh, mainly the payloads that will be able to be recovered uh, and then handed back over to our customers after uh, recovery. And on the left side of the picture, uh, you have uh, the service module. And so here you can see uh, the solar panels. Uh, the service module is basically here uh, to ensure uh, the thermal control and the power uh, management during uh, the, the long duration of this mission. So now if we talk about the mission, so the typical mission profile will be that uh, will be sent by the launcher. Here with uh, Nix, we're launcher agnostic, so it means that we'll have a lot of opportunities to launch. So it will be uh, uh, an easy access to the space um, and quite flexible. Uh, and we will be separated from the launcher, injected in low Earth orbit, and then we will be able to stay uh, autonomously in orbit for up to two months. Uh, we have the capacity to host uh, up to uh, four tons of payloads on board, uh, and uh, we will have a fully automated platform. Uh, and uh, we are open for sales. Uh, so, of course, if, uh, if anyone is interested here, uh, we are more than uh, available to answer your questions. Uh, we have already the support of uh, some partners uh, that uh, you, you might know, uh, so among them, Nanohax, uh, Komat, and Yuri, and we have also the support. So we have seen this uh, with Geraldine. Uh, thanks again to Isa for the support, but we also have um, a support for CNES and, and DLR uh, with already uh, very strong discussions for, for contracts uh, also on Nix Earth. Uh, and then in the future, the idea is to, of course, evolve into uh, the operational version of Nix, which will be uh, able to deliver cargo to space station uh, with uh, docking. Uh, so to the next slide, please, uh, Victor, thanks a lot. So what do we offer with, with Nix? So basically before Nix, if you want to send something uh, to space, uh, you need to have a very large amount of money. Uh, you need to be very patient because you know that uh, having a slot on the ISS is, is quite long. And also uh, you need to cope with a, a lot of constraints and, and safety requirements. Here with Nix, uh, we want to change uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, status quo, and we want to provide an easy access to space, meaning that we'll have regular flights. Uh, we have uh, an automated platform that will be uh, able to provide you with also high flexibility in terms of recovery of the, of the payloads. Uh, as Ellen was mentioning, we're proposing a, a price today that is the lowest on the market. Uh, and this still uh, will, while providing a high quality and uh, one of the uh, most important uh, recovery mass uh, uh, today offered uh, on the market. And uh, here we are uh, providing this next platform to unleash your imagination. Why? Because actually you will have 
a lot less constraints than on uh, the current platform uh, out there. So uh, you have more mass, more volume, uh, you will have more connectivity, uh, you will have also uh, less constraints because the first flights will not be a uh, human flight. So in terms of safety requirements, you can indeed think uh, quite big and uh, really unleash uh, uh, your imagination uh, to get to uh, your, your dream experience. To the next slide, thanks a lot. So now a little bit about the technical uh, capacity that we are offering. Uh, so as I was saying, we have uh, two parts in Nix. We have uh, one part that is the capsule, so on the right side of the picture, uh, which is a pressurized environment. In there, we can provide uh, a capacity for the payloads of 2.5 tons and a volume that is around two meter cube. And on the service module, we also have the possibility to provide uh, unpressurized uh, compartment for payloads up to 1.5 tons and six meter cube. Uh, and here the recovery um, will be, uh, the recovery mass will be 2.5 tons because actually the full capsule is getting back on earth. We will provide a microgravity environment that will be similar to ISS, uh, even potentially better because we will not have uh, all the maneuvers that the ISS has to perform uh, to, to keep on the orbit. Of course, we'll have maneuvers, but normally they should be, uh, let's say, uh, way shorter. Uh, and as already explained, we'll have uh, full recovery of the capsule. Then on the left side of the, of the slide, you see that we're providing a Ethernet uh, interface and we're providing a, a communication link. So we are providing uh, uplink and downlink uh, with low data rate for L status and, and comments. So you will be basically uh, able to uh, connect with your payload and to uh, uh, trigger uh, operations from the ground. And also we'll be able to provide you with L status during the flight. And uh, in terms of uh, downlink, we also provide a high data rate downlink uh, with up to 300 megabytes per second during two slots per day. Uh, and also on the data side, uh, we provide a storage uh, for all customers that will be uh, up to 10 gigabytes. Uh, also uh, on the, uh, let's say, electrical side, uh, we provide an overall power of 750 watts uh, that will have to be, uh, let's say, optimized and shared between our customers. Uh, and we uh, have a 28 volt uh, continuous voltage interface. Uh, in terms of uh, mechanical and thermal aspects, so we will have uh, uh, on board the capsule, um, um, let's say, attitude control uh, system that will enable us uh, to uh, smoothen the heat loss and the G loss during re-entry so that our uh, customers have the payload comfort they need. And uh, we'll have a controlled thermal environment on board, uh, which will enable you to stay uh, around uh, the 20 degrees that a lot of, um, of experiments are looking for. Uh, of course, will be uh, reusable. That's the target, uh, and um, and uh, this is uh, only the first step until we evolve in, until the uh, docking to the space stations. And so, just to give you uh, an overview of, uh, let's say, all the uh, use cases uh, that we could serve uh, with Nix, I will not go through uh, all of them one by one. But what I can do is to give you already some examples of real use cases that we have uh, seen uh, uh, with uh, Mission Possible. That is uh, the first demonstrator that we're about to launch in 24, and that is already fully booked. Uh, but basically, uh, we have on board um, uh, in our demonstration uh, regarding. Uh, the development, for example, of new thermal control systems that need to be uh, um, uh, demonstrated uh, in, in orbit. Uh, we have also uh, uh, rovers and mechanisms uh, that need to be um, uh, triggered and deployed um, with microgravity environment uh, to see if everything uh, is, uh, is working well. Uh, we have also on board uh, some uh, incubators for um, uh, lab experiences. So basically, uh, with Nix Earth, we'll be able also to provide uh, life life science experiences, um, and uh, something that is also. Uh, quite uh, interesting is that uh, we are also able uh, to look at um, a lot of different uh, measurements. So basically, if you want to measure uh, radiations or if you want to measure thermal environment or even level of, uh, of uh, vacuum or level of microgravity, this is also a very good uh, uh, platform uh, for this. And then I think that uh, it's back to you, John. Victor. Victor. 
<laughs> <laughs> but thanks thank you so much Nashua really really appreciate it thanks a lot for giving more details um, I would like to invite the audience uh, use the question and answer functionality of Zoom I see there's already one question in there and um, then we will look at it uh, at the very end of the of the event so thanks a lot Nashua um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our panelists um, we have with us Bill McLamp who is the CEO and founder of uh, Low, Earth or uh, Low Earth Orbit Biosciences. Uh, we have Christoph Figus, who is the head of advanced concepts and robotics at Airbus Defense and Space, and Pratip Basu, who is the CEO and founder of Satsur. So we'll just stop sharing my screen so that I can see you as well here in the call. And I hope, Yanis, you can help me to to spotlight um, all our panelists. We have Pratip here, exactly, perfect. So Pratip, Christoph, Bill, can you hear us? Yes. Yep. Yep. Great. So first of all, thank you so much for being with us. It's really a pleasure uh, that you take the time um, to share a bit your point of view about an orbit technology demonstration, what your plans are, where you see the future, what currently the problems are. And I think that's really interesting for the audience. Um, I would like to start quickly with one sentence um, that you introduce yourself, actually, and so I would just kick it off with you, Bill. What would be the best way to describe you in uh, in one sentence? Um, uh, I my to describe me, uh, I'm a uh, lifelong uh, career-wise uh, uh, space enthusiast um, and it, uh, involved in the development, integration, and, and management of spaceflight experiments on space shuttle and international space station and looking to provide affordable solutions to conduct research and development in microgravity um, to support the growth of a commercial Leo economy. Thank you very much, Bill. Over to you, Christoph. What would be one sentence to describe you? I'm there to make the future possible. <laughs> That's very nice. That's very nice. And now over to you, Pratip. <laughs> Well, um, one sentence description would be uh, I'm Pratip uh, and uh, I have been uh, on, a, on a crusade uh, to, you know, solve the toughest problems uh, on Earth using data from space. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much for keeping it in one sentence. It's a challenging task, but it's very refreshing to hear it from that point of view. Um, I would like to start with the very first question um, to give a bit the audience an overview of what your plans currently are uh, on your roadmap, let's say, in, in orbit demonstration and why do you actually need to do in orbit technology demonstration? Uh, maybe with you, Christoph. So in Airbus, we are developing a lot of technology for space application, and some of them are quite sensitive to a space environment. So, for example, as explained before, uh, thermal hardware where we are using fluids in microgravity in uh, capillary behavior in order, for example, to transport heat. Uh, and we need most of the time to demonstrate the performances of the technology. So in the past, we do used uh, uh, cap uh, photon uh, capsules or photon uh, spaceship uh, from Russian uh, that was, uh, let's say, a barter uh, between Europe and, uh, and Russian. In order to perform such demonstration, we are uh, lacking now uh, this type of opportunity, but we are definitely looking to opportunities in order to make fly our new technology. So this is an example, but uh, you can see behind me, uh, we plan to have a robotic factory in space. And uh, this is typically uh, the type of opportunity that offer uh, uh, the exploration company. Thank you. Thank you, Christophe. Pratip. What is, uh, what is on your roadmap and why do you need to perform in orbit technology demonstration? So uh, in orbit dem demonstration uh, of, of technology is very important for us at Satya because we are actually uh, building uh, payloads uh, ground up uh, and uh, you know the, the kind of uh, uh, platform exploration company is building, it helps us to iterate faster at a lower cost. I think that's very important to be agile in this kind of uh, you know, space hardware development. And uh, yeah, uh, when you are uh, doing tough things uh, like uh, uh, new, completely new payload development, such as, such as ourselves, I think uh, uh, in orbit, uh, uh, you know, demonstrations uh, like what Exploration Company provides is an exciting opportunity uh, for, for a company like us. Thank you, Pranteep, for sharing your view. And last but not least, Bill, 
it's also a pleasure to have your technology on board of mission possible next year maybe you want to share a bit like uh, the kind of technology demonstration you want to perform and why you want to do that okay uh well first the uh the opportunity for these proof of concept studies does uh uh, will allow us to demonstrate the functionality of, of subsystems that will be part of a more comprehensive uh, platform for future flights uh, to reduce the risk to success um, on those flights. Um, my ultimate goal with my company is to develop a variety of capabilities for uh, an uh, on orbital biosciences laboratory. So we, for an opportunity for a, a, flat, a fast to flight commercial lab to LEO alternative for R&D on on um, orbiting platforms, and um, and uh, as far as the type of uh, tests, um, uh, with an emphasis in life sciences, they're a lot of uh, often um, comprised of fluid systems, so requiring the delivery and control of these fluids. So we'll be evaluating the operation and control of some novel fluid handling systems, and demonstrating remote operation and control, which will be necessary since uh, you know. We'll need automated systems for these uncrewed um, opportunities. All right, thank you very much for sharing this. My next question goes towards then the requirements of your application. Like, do you have specific requirements that make it difficult um, to actually test in orbit the microgravity? Like, um, I don't know, you, maybe there's human interaction necessary, or you have like huge power uh, needs. Uh, Pratip, is there anything that you could share, like in terms of the requirements that your applications need? Yeah, uh, so for us, uh, the stability of the platform is critical. Uh, and, uh, you know, in a, uh, in a way, the propulsion system uh, that the exploration company is, is uh, using in, in its mission, uh, it fits the requirement uh, to, to achieve that kind of platform stability, obviously propulsion and the ADCS. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it helps us to, again, as I said, uh, iterate uh, on on uh, our design faster because uh, we you know instead of launching the entire satellite and and uh, learning from some failures there uh, you, where when we have uh, these specifications met through in orbit demonstration platform like exploration companies it makes life easier <laughs> that's nice to hear that's what we want to show here that it makes life easy for you bill do you have specific requirements that are like you know that makes it so special that you need to do this in space and you cannot perform it on earth uh yes well we, well one of the things uh uh that's a benefit of this flight is the the extended um duration of microgravity with in relation to say parabolic or suborbital flights when you're looking at um biological processes having that uh that that clean microgravity environment um, over a longer duration, it's certainly a benefit. Um, and I think um, having the ability uh, uh, for um, good connectivity to your, uh, to your systems for control and monitoring, uh, particularly for biological systems, although for this first flight won't involve any biology, but we'll be evaluating the, the systems that will support it. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, Christoph, also on your side, like uh, Airbus, of course, is like uh, not just one dedicated topic. It's really a big, big world uh, that uh, that you're looking at. So do you see specific requirements or what, what is your experience with the requirements? For in so I would say, uh, as said by my colleagues, uh, gravity uh, condition and duration. So uh, we are looking for, for some long, long duration uh, fly. Uh, data data transfer because uh, what we expect to do tomorrow needs a uh, lot of data and uh, I would say power and GNC for uh, avionics uh, because uh, we are looking for for some powerful experiment uh, and we are looking also to a very good avionic uh, in order to maintain and control the operation we plan to do. All right, thank you very much for sharing this. The next question is a bit more, I would say, looking towards the future, because I would like to ask you to share with your point of view, where do you actually see like the future of uh, technology demonstrations in space really for space applications? Today, it's, we understood it's not that simple, it's not that easy to actually get uh, technology in there, but do you kind of have a wish list? Would you would say, okay, this is uh, what I would like to see happening in the in the upcoming few years? 
And this is how I foresee, this is how I envision actually the, the future for demonstrating technology uh, in, in orbit. And I will start with, um, with Bill in this case. Okay, the future of in-orbit technology demonstrations. I think it, there'll always be a value, um, as I uh, briefly mentioned before, um, reducing the risk to success of the more uh, comprehensive projects that work, are to follow. Um, I think the reusable uh, spacecraft um, and the, uh, the, the higher cadence of flights at a reasonable cost are certainly um, allows for um, reproducible, re repeatable, re reproducible results um, to uh, proceed more rapidly to uh, a final solution for your uh, projects and programs. Thank you, Bill. Christoph, on your side, what do you envision for the future? So I think uh, there would be a real development of the uh, of the low Earth orbit uh, space economy and uh, in orbit demonstration will be certainly a topic, a clear topic. Uh, for me, we need to have a global approach on the topic. So uh, certainly uh, more uh, about uh, logistic and infrastructure in total. So uh, having capacity to have infrastructure to uh, perform uh, in orbit demonstration for a long duration and having a logistic to bring back uh, space for Earth or Earth for space. Uh, so in a bilateral, but uh, in one way it can be, uh, let's say, experiment. In the other way, it can be uh, goods that could be uh, generated in space. Uh, so, so all this uh, will, will create a new economy and uh, certainly uh, for that, uh, a lot of opportunity of in orbit demonstration. Thanks a lot, Christoph. Very nice, very nice vision. And uh, on your side, Pratip. Well, uh, you know, the vision for in-orbit demonstration that I uh, have is that it should be as easy as uh, parabolic, uh, you know, flights that we have with aircraft, uh, and you know, being able to return, refurbish, and launch again for quicker iterations at a fraction of the cost that's today. And I think uh, uh, the exploration company is is some is is actually uh, on that uh, path only. The speed at which they had developed uh, the, the first mission uh, definitely proves that. Uh, the, the vision that at least I am envisioning, uh, uh, you know, that exploration companies is definitely going to meet it. I, I, also, one more thing to add would be uh, that uh, such demonstrations, you know, de demonstrations uh, should be plug and uh, uh, play access. It, it should be like a plug and play accessible workbench and uh, should be arrived with uniform standard and, and SOPs. So I think that's very important to, to achieve these uh, kind of uh, uh, performance metrics, but hopefully we'll do that before the end of the decade. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think there were really interesting points. On the one hand, I hear like the cadence uh, from Bill, like with more frequent flights, make it cheaper, the global collaboration and the ecosystem building from Christoph, and then your side plug and play, which also sounds very interesting. Um, looking at the time where would, I would have like one, one last question would be like considering this. And also I know from the audience and the registrations, we have like young entrepreneurs um, with us um, who just founded the startup. Do you have any any advice on, on your side, valuable advice, like um, if, if it goes to like in orbit tech demonstration, uh, yeah, prototyping, like from your point of view, like what should they do? What should they start with? And then I would guide this question to, to Christoph. What should they do? Uh, I think, uh, 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 <laughs> It's, it's a really an experience huh, to perform in orbit demonstration. So I did perform several ones in my, in my career. I think uh, you need to, uh, to have opportunity to exchange with a colleague uh, in order to learn about that, uh, how to master and on all these type of things, because uh, uh, sometimes space is uh, hard. Uh, and uh, I, I have seen a lot of people that did perform experiment, invest a lot of time, and uh, at the end of the day, it did not work. So, of course, uh, you will fail, you will learn, uh, you will not have success all the time. Huh? So this is the magic of, uh, of, uh, of the experiment. Uh, but uh, I think uh, exchange with people that have already experimented this type of thing, uh, challenge also the input of your career huh? because uh, it's also an opportunity uh, to learn and uh, to express your need. Uh, and sometimes uh, you can have a good uh, 
a good response, uh, a good answer. So uh, in the past, uh, this was the case in the past flight I did perform. So, so uh, this is what I, I would say. Uh, of Thank course, you, very much. you need to accept failure. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think it's very, very insightful. Pratip, you have some good advice. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I do, from a uh, advice point of view, well, quite. I do have quite a few, but uh, perhaps for the uh, benefit of the audience, I, I would say, uh, you know, we need to prove for a purpose and not validating milestones. Uh, every tech has its journey, but, uh, you know, trying to do demos burns a lot of cash, knowing the, hence knowing the right balance between maturity and de-risking strategies is important uh, for a growing startup. Thank you so much, Batip. And I know you're also in this situation, so it's also very valuable to hear, you know, from your point of view, uh, building this company, like what you perceive there. Yeah. And Bill, last but not least, your, your word on an advice. Uh, yes, I would say uh, part, partner with those that share your passion um, and uh, focus on realistic goals with, it, uh, with an achievable timeline and budget for these proof of concept flights. And uh, uh, focus on quantifiable performance results. Awesome. Thank you very much. I think that brings it very much to the point. Uh, really appreciate it. Also looking at the time, I will close the panel here and I would like to say thank you very much, um, Christoph, Pratip, Bill, for taking the time, sharing your experience, sharing your insights. Um, at least I think it was very in interesting for, for me and also I hope for the, for the audience to hear from you and what your plans are. And um, in order to continue, I will just continue sharing my screen and we will actually share with you how you will be able to fly on demonstration if you want to do that on our mission Odyssey. And this I would lead here to Pablo. Victor, if you, if you allow me. Yes. Um, Odyssey is happening in 26. Uh, and the competition of ESA is happening on the mission possible that we fly in 24. And I just want to pass the message to the audience that we are today on track. We've been on track cash and planning since company creation. So that's part of our DNA. And uh, so on 24, this is fully booked already. So no possibility anymore to book any experiments with us, but you can participate to ESA competition so that perhaps your experiments or uh, in orbit demonstration can fly with us in 24. So that's opportunity number one. And then opportunity number two and floor is yours, Pablo, is the mission Odyssey that's going to fly in 26. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ellen. Perfect handover. And now over to you, Pablo. Okay, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm uh, Pablo Lari. I'm, I'm, I'm leading the, the mission sales. And, uh, and as, I, as, as uh, Ellen just said, I'm Victor. You know, once uh, Najwa has uh, told you what, uh, you know, you can do uh, with us uh, technically, and also you have heard the, you know, the experiences of, uh, of um, Christophe, uh, Pratip and, uh, and uh, Bill. I think it's, uh, you know, a good moment to let you know uh, how we can uh, help you with that uh, last mile uh, for, you know, getting under contract for, for our mission next, uh, Mission Odyssey, which would be, as Selen said, uh, right after Mission Possible. So um, if you can, yeah. So uh, thanks, Victor. Uh, so we, we have like, like three um, main axes to help you, uh, uh, you know, advancing a little bit the, 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 the you know, getting under contract for, for, um, for your uh, in orbit demonstration. So basically this is done like, like two years in advance. Right now we are like uh, about three years advance of, of the launch date. So to uh, help you with, with, with that advance or to do that contract ahead of time, we, we have like three main axes. The first one is we make it affordable. So um, if, if you are able to book um, uh, your, your um, uh, experiment or your in-orbit validation uh, activity with us by June uh, this year, we'd be able to give you these excellent prices that you can see in screen. So 25 Ks per kilo and two U's uh, for pressurized payloads and 20,000 euros for per kilo uh, and two U's uh, for unpressurized pay payloads. Okay. So uh, this is excellent uh, uh, price is probably like between 
you know, one half and, and one third the price that, that you can find there for, for a similar um, uh, service. Uh, so it's really a, a unique opportunity. Uh, and then how we do that, uh, to make it easy for you to, to advance is that we, we are proposing a two-step approach, okay? So, um, uh, so you know, when, when you uh, get an, uh, start, uh, you know, getting the, the contract, we, we need to check, of course, the technical requirements, everything's, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what we can do and what we can, uh, we, we can do what you're proposing. Uh, we look for the, the volume and the mass and, and, and we, you know, derive the, the associated price. So this is standard. And then we define a, pay, a payment schedule uh, along this year that we are working ahead of time, right? So, um, so you'd be paying 7% at booking, uh, which would be at, you know, in September this year. Then we will have another payment in December at the end of the year, uh, also 7%. And then uh, we'll have, uh, you know, a last payment uh, in June 2024, also 7% before going to the final agreement in September 2024, which would be more or less the timing that uh, you'd be doing uh, nominally, right? With this, you freeze this, uh, this uh, price, which we are uh, announcing. Um, and then, well, what's the drawback uh, of, of doing things ahead? Well, that you are, uh, you know, taking the risk and so on. So in order to reduce that risk, we are giving this flexibility. So uh, what we are proposing is that, you know, if between step one and step two, so basically during 2023 and, you know, the three first quarter of 2024, if for any reason, uh, you know, your development, your experiment your product whatever has a delay or something or or your plans changes and you want to uh, you know move to a, a farther moment uh, your your flight and your and your yeah, your, your activity uh, then you ask us and and you know we will uh, by contract uh, be obliged or yeah, we be happy in fact <laughs> to look for another <laughs> for another moment uh, you know, closer to, to your needs uh, in the in the subsequent uh, in a subsequent mission, um, and uh, and and the other situation would be that that it's uh, you know the opposite that uh, for any reason we want to 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 delay the mission or something uh, during that that period that I just uh, mentioned. So in that case, uh, we propose you the new date. If that date uh, is okay for you, then perfect. And if not, we'd be ready to, to pay you back to reimburse all the payments that we have done until until that moment. Okay, so so this is uh, these are the three uh, main advantages or uh, yeah, assets that we are we are proposing in order to 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 make it easier for you to advance a little bit the, the you know the contracting uh, process. And I Very think much. that's it. Back to you, Victor. Thanks. Thank you very much, Pablo, for explaining all the process, uh, how we bring people experiments uh, into, into Mission Odyssey. And here on the next slide, I will share with you the contact details of Pablo, but also the rest of the team. Pierre Foucault is our Chief Space and Defense Revenue Officer, and Dana Baki, who is our Chief Commercial Officer. You will have access to the slides later on, and of course, also you will see it then on our YouTube channel. And then, I would like to thank, first of all, Bill, Christoph, Pratip, also Sheradil, Ellen, Nashua, and Pablo, um, and also to you, to the audience, um, for your attention and for being part of this session. And I would like to take the time now to give the room to you, to the audience, uh, to ask your questions. I see that there's already some questions in the Q&A field. Feel free to still put them questions in there. We can also vote for questions and then I will just open up now the questions and we will have a look. Just if we don't have enough time to answer all the questions, uh, we will take a screenshot of the questions and we'll answer to you in return. Uh, so don't be worried if your question is not answered right now. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen. And of course, you can always reach out to one of our colleagues and we will have a meeting with you. So first question, Christopher O'Boyle, thank you very much. Hi, can you explain how you're generating continuous power for the capsule? So I think this is a very good question that would go to Najwa. 
Yes, thanks, Victor. So um, a very good question indeed. So we're using the solar panels that you have seen uh, on the walls of the service module. And when we are uh, experiencing eclipse, uh, then we switch on our batteries. Thank you, Nashua. I hope this answers the question to Christoph, but of course you can still post another question. Let's go to the next one, Clément Gouchon. Thank you very much for your question. Do you also dissipate the thermal of your customer's payload? I guess, again, Nashua, this goes to you. Yeah. Uh, so indeed, uh, Clément, we, we plan to dissipate the, the thermal of our payloads. Uh, so basically, whether we use a co plates or, um, let's say, uh, closed loops. Um, but yeah, that that's basically the the plan. Uh, and that's for sure what you will need uh, to, to go through uh, this uh, kind of uh, mission durations. All right. Now we go over to Bruno Pagliccia. I hope I pronounced the, right, uh, the name correctly. Thank you for your question. What would be the maximum data you can send back 300 megabits per second twice a day, but what are the transmission duration? Is it also a question for you, Najwa? Yes. Uh, so Bruno, good question. And indeed I didn't precise the, the transmission duration. So the duration is 15 minutes uh, twice per day. So then uh, it will be uh, uh, 300 uh, megabytes uh, times, uh, you know, the two um, two slots per day times the 15 minutes. So it should be something around uh, 300 gigabytes, something like this overall on the mission for the two months. And perhaps just a precision, all the figures provided by Najwa are standard services corresponding to the price that was um, presented by Pablo. Uh, of course, if there is special requirements, special needs, uh, we can probably accommodate and then the price most probably going to be a little bit different. Uh, so this is not, uh, let's say, um, a capacity or technical problem. It's more like we want to give you Western Standard Services for that price. Thank you, Len. Yeah. Next question from William Bierch. What is your intended launch option from a European perspective beyond Ariane 6, which is highly likely not to be a cost competitive launcher what else do you see as a other alternatives or by agnostic, do you mean SpaceX agnostic? I would propose this question to Hélène. Yeah, so by launcher agnostic, it means uh, we can launch with SpaceX. And by the way, the 24 mission, Mission Possible is going to be launched with SpaceX. Uh, so we have, of course, uh, SpaceX compatible. Uh, we're also compatible with Ariane 6. Uh, we also are compatible with GSLV. So the Indian uh, heavy lift launcher, and we plan to be compatible with uh, Rocket Lab Neutron and Relativity Space, the big launcher. Thank you, Hélène. Um, next question from Hussein Bukhari. Thank you for the question. Is the price similar for Odyssey and possible? What is the increase of price for Vision Odyssey onwards? So first I can answer the first question and then it would um, leave the, the second question to Pablo or Hélène. The first question, Odyssey and possible, that's not the similar price. So we actually, as you have seen, it's a smaller, um, shorter mission with mission possible. We have offered this in the very beginning as an early bird price um, for 1,500 euro per kilogram. And at the later stage, um, increased it to 5,000 euro per kilogram. And at the very last stage, we had 10,000 euro per kilogram. So we had different steps in between. And uh, as you have seen, Mission Odyssey is at the price starting at 20,000 euro per kilogram for the unpressurized and 25,000 euro per kilogram for the pressurized. And then the second question, I would leave it to Pablo or Ellen. Yeah, I think, Victor, you explained uh, quite well the price. I think what you've, uh, to, perhaps to give some order of magnitude, if you send a payload to ASS today, you have to pay around about 100,000. Uh, euro per kilogram to perform an experiment and then have it back. So this uh, 2025 is actually quite affordable on the market. Um, and uh, we, with the price we have provided today is a price basically for if you book, as was explained by Pablo, uh, now up to September uh, 23. What we've experienced with Mission Possible, uh, you know, it's fully booked today uh, by clients, uh, is that there was a lot of demand uh, and, you know, the mission is fully booked, it's going to fly in two years from now, right? Uh, even less than two years from now. Uh, so if there is a lot of demand, we may indeed increase the price uh, step by step. So that's why also we wanted to provide you with this, let's say, early bird opportunity. 
uh, but we are not yet, you know, there what's going to be the price in one year or two years because we are still in a startup learning phase, I would say. Uh, I can just share with you the data from the past that we've seen a big demand for Mission Impossible, more than what we were expecting, actually. And so at the end, we decided to increase the price uh, because we had this capability and there was basically too much demand for the capacity of the vehicle. So if the same happens for uh, Mission Odyssey, uh, you know, we will, of course, um, do that. And for the time being, the price is, as explained by Pablo, guaranteed up to September 23. Thank you, Hélène. The next question is about the capacity and uh, about filling it up with four tons on a regular basis. How much are they willing to pay for the service? So regarding the, the business plan, I would say, have space agencies committed to becoming an anchor customer? I would also leave this question to you, Hélène. Yeah, so the, the, the capacity basically has been designed together with clients. Uh, we've been discussing with uh, space agencies uh, around the world. Uh, we've been discussing with private space stations uh, because the core of our business is, of course, to bring cargo and then hopefully in a certain step humans uh, to space stations. So what we have in mind is to have every year a regular in-orbit demonstration, free-flying opportunity for clients like you who like to demonstrate technologies and also uh, to potentially perform in-orbit services as a, let's say, first try. So if you have some operations you'd like to demonstrate in orbit, if you have some technology you'd like to fly, there'll be once per year this opportunity to fly with us. On top of that, we plan to fly several times per year uh, to go to stations. Uh, we have today the ASS, we have the Chinese space stations, tomorrow there'll be some private space stations. So we've based basically the performance of the vehicle on discussions with stations, how much cargo flight they need per year, and what's the up mass and down mass that they, they need. And uh, we've signed already LOIs with all the top private space stations up there. Uh, coming back to the anchor client, uh, you may know that ESA is currently in a barter agreement with NASA. Uh, but we are working uh, actually together with ESA uh, to see how ESA could become the first client for a mission to ISS that we plan to perform in 27. Uh, so hopefully more to come soon, but nothing to be announced yet. Thank you very much, Ellen, for the very clear answer. Thank you also very much to all the questions. I'm just looking at the time and considering the time, respecting the time, we will answer back uh, to your questions. Alexi, Antonio, Hussein, and Peter, thank you very much for this. Uh, we will take care of it and we will answer you back um, as we have now through the registration, also your email address. I hope that's okay for you. And thanks a lot for asking the questions. Um, Coming towards the end, I would just like to highlight again the opportunity for the ESO Payload Masters. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to fly technology, test technology uh, next year um, on our Mission Possible mission. So the deadline of the application is on the 30th of April. I have sent the link into the chat and also you can find it here and on LinkedIn and on our websites. And we will also organize a webinar in the upcoming weeks where you can actually ask some questions about this. This is just a view how the registration looks like and um, the database where you then actually submit your application. And then I would like to say thank you very much. I would like to say thanks to our panelists, Bill, Christoph, and Pratip, as well to the team behind the scenes, Rona and Yanis, who made this possible. It's always not easy, this technical setups, but uh, I'm happy to have a great team that supports us here. And we're going to share the video, as I mentioned, um, on our YouTube channel. And we would be also happy to receive feedback from you. So when you leave this call, you will receive, let's say, a pop-up window with some questions. And we would really appreciate if you could give us a feedback, how you like the event, what we can do better in the future, what topics we should address in the future. And we're more than happy to do so. And so I will leave you to this evening. I say thank you very much and uh, have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. <laughs>